All this year, the media partners in the Detroit Journalism Cooperative are looking at whether social and economic conditions have improved in Detroit since the 1967 riots. The group recently launched the third installment of this project, focusing on poverty as a pathway to prison. Detroit Public Television examined the topic through the eyes of an ex-prisoner. These are the same streets he walked as a youngster, but for 43-year-old Yusuf Bunchy Shakur, the path he now walks is quite different. My success story is a reflection of my community. Growing up in an impoverished community, witnessing violence, drugs, and lacking the basic human needs plays heavily on the psyche of a child leading to depression, anxiety, and withdrawal. These children are waking up, they may not have had anything to eat the night before, and there's a good chance that they won't have any breakfast. Some of these children are living in abandoned homes, or there are many abandoned homes on their blocks. It's a war zone. They're robbed, in essence, of their childhood. If I'm sitting watching my mother you know, come home and she's barely keeping you know, food on the refrigerator, she's barely able to, 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 to feed or clothe us, that impacts me as a child. Growing up without his father, who was later incarcerated, perpetuated that anger. He, like five million other children in the U.S., was living with a parent in prison. Yusuf was first kicked out of school in kindergarten. At the age of nine, he was arrested for breaking and entering, starting a pathway to prison. A child who is born into a family with an incarcerated parent already starts life at a disadvantage. Uh, there are studies that show that a uh, child with an incarcerated mother or father uh, is going to experience more poverty than an average child. There are attachment issues that happen. And there's a lot of shame and stigma that's attached to having an incarcerated parent. At the age of 13, Yusuf started the Zone 8 gang. By 15, he was thrown out of every public school in Detroit he attended. Putting kids out of school and putting a scarlet letter on them at any age is not good. The street is not the education that you want them to have. The street is going to make it so that they are perhaps a better criminal. That's what expulsion is for, for many of us. Like, what do I do next? Where do I go? I don't see no light no more. So, and the light that I see is drugs, drug selling, maybe prostitution. Maybe killing. I mean, these are the roads. These are the alternatives. By 19, following in his father's footsteps, he would join the 2.3 million Americans in prison, serving his own nine year sentence in a maximum security facility. So you see that kind of like this pipeline, right, that goes from, from poverty to incarceration of a parent to stigmatization of a child to a child being put in an out of home placement, child gets in trouble gets into the juvenile justice system, and then pipelines into the adult justice system. It was here where his life was changed by another inmate at the Alger Corrections Facility. It was here where, at the age of 20, that Yusuf met his father for the first time. And that relationship that we developed in prison had a tremendous impact on my redeeming and transformed my life. This is where Yusuf's path changed. 95% of prisoners will return to the public, on average over 10,000 every week. For those that don't develop skills, they will join the two-thirds that experience the pipeline of perpetual prison. You're trying to re-enter society, you want to get a job, you want to get housing, and you're stymied at every turn. So you're setting people up then to fail. You're setting them up to be caught up into in, to the system again and again and again. Sending many back to the streets doing the exact same thing that got them incarcerated in the first place. Yusuf was able to see the deeper seismic results of poverty, violence, and drugs that perpetuates this cycle. How many lives do we destroy? How, many, how much dope do we have to sell? So I mean, in selling dope, how many mothers we, we've hurt. How many fathers we, we've, we've killed or sent off to prison? Now the, now the children have no mother, has no father. That's the cycle of poverty. This is, what, this is how poverty is destroying black families, destroying black communities. 
It is that raw emotion that leads Yusuf to become a pillar of the community by opening up a bookstore, community center, and organize free backpack giveaways in his community. So par we rose above poverty. Even though we're in poverty, we rose above it because of our love, because of our commitment. And get back on the right path, walking redemption road.